Margo, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing just great, Margo. My name is Brendan Cross, and I wanted to talk to you today about your new album, Such Ferocious Beauty, about the Cowboy Junkies' new album, Such Ferocious Beauty. As fans of yours will know, uh, you are in the group with your two brothers, Mike and Peter Timmons, and longtime friend Alan Anton on bass and keys. I wanted to ask you about the name of the album, Such Ferocious Beauty. It's such an interesting and visceral album name. Uh, I've got to know how that came about, along with the image on the album cover. Well, the image, the album cover was done by my brother, Pete. He's the drummer in the band. The album title came from, there's a line in one of the songs. I think it's Flood. I can't, mm-hmm. I should know that. <laughs> Anyway, okay. one of the songs on the album uh, has such ferocious beauty. And when I first read it, I thought, that's beautiful. And um, with what the whole album is about, it just made sense to me. So I said to Mike, ferocious beauty, you know, and he said, yeah, that's great. And the, the image of the moth on the front with the white background, it's almost like this taxidermized uh, image of this really interesting, beautiful creature that a lot of people kind of see as like a pest. So. How did do you know how he came up with that that idea to put the moth on on the album cover? Well, again, you know, the first sort of thoughts were more literal, like ferocious beauty being a tiger or something, you know, an animal that's beautiful to look at but would eat you if it saw you in the jungle. <laughs> uh, so, but then you know, I think Pete was sort of thinking about our music and our style, which is yeah. a little bit more subtle. Um, we're not hit you over the head kind of rock band so he thought maybe a moth uh, you know or or something like you were just sort of saying people wouldn't really consider beautiful but but are beautiful in their own way and maybe not ferocious i mean maybe there are some ferocious moths i don't know I've met a few, <laughs> but, yeah. but again not so literal but you know the ferocious part just comes from from the whole part of nature it, you mm. know it's beautiful yet it is uh, a ferocious world Absolutely. And, you know, it, it fits so well with the album sound, uh, ethereal guitar work uh, from Michael, who also is the lead songwriter for Cowboy Junkies. And lyrically, the album's special. It has a lot of themes of loss, grief, uh, heartache. There's a lot to it, not only musically, uh, the lyrics are pretty heavy. And I, I guess I just wanted to ask that the songs on this record sound so personal. They're weighty, they're raw. It almost makes me feel, um, as a listener, invited to share in a moment of 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 these experiences of, of the songs uh, like like on the song what i lost or blue skies which seems like it's about longing for something more yet recognizing that what you already have is actually really special that's kind of what i got out of it and yeah various interpretations from these songs and i think your voice takes up the task so well and captures so beautifully the lyrics like it, it, there must be like a responsibility to 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 yeah. represent the work as best you can. I was wondering, yeah, I guess what the process is for that because it's so it's so interesting to me as somebody who hasn't who hasn't worked with another writer as as a layman, I suppose. I, I think I'm lucky because I think that Mike, as a songwriter, is very egoless in that I think when he writes, his process is done. That's it, and yeah. the song then belongs next to me. And it's my job to interpret it. And then next to the listener, uh, who's going to reinterpret it again. Because I think when you listen to a song, you're bringing your own life experience, your own mood, you know, your age, your whatever. So when I listen, when Mike gives me a song, he never sort of tells me, this is what it means. This is how I want you to present it. I interpret it. And then I I go from there. And, mm-hmm. um, and he's never... I mean, he has later on, uh, years later, he said, you know, so what did this song mean to you? And, you know, <laughs> we sort of laugh because sometimes it's not the same thing. Um, yeah. Most of the time we're in the same ballpark. But again, you know, I come at things from a female perspective, which is going to change a lot of things right away. But the fact that Mike and I are brother and sister and we share a lot of the same lives and the fact that he writes songs about just human nature and living and Mm. being on this earth and trying to cope. I'm coping with the same sort of things. We come from the same background. We have the kind of same expectations of life, uh, who we want to be. 
you know, what makes a good person and a bad person, all those sorts of, you know, our morality. So usually I can pretty much pick up on what Mike is thinking and I'm thinking along the same lines, but yeah, he never really tells me. And so, so kind of, I, I, I'm allowed to go at it the way I feel it. Yeah. That's, that's just such a cool way of doing things. And I think you, there's a lot of trust involved in that. And a lot of, I mean, you, you've worked together, I, your, your entire career is on, on songwriting. There's yeah. got to be a special bond there. And that's just so beautiful. Well, I, I think that's why, you know, I think that if Mike had been hardcore, um, this is how I want you to sing it and not allowed me my own expression, I think we would have ended a long time ago because those songs eventually become my own. They become mine as well. And if he told me how to do it and I didn't feel it that way, I think it would have been frustrating. So I think that, that Mike's being that generous is the reason why we're still still together. Thank you so much, Margo. I was wondering if you wanted to play any particular track from the album from such ferocious beauty from Cowboy Junkies, if you're just tuning in, Margo Timmons online with me. Uh, mm. Was there any song that particularly speaks to you or that you have a certain interpretation of that you'd like to share with our audience? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. What I lost is, is probably the most personal uh, uh, most revealing of of all the songs. Um, so you know, my my our dad died just recently last year, this month. Oh my god! In the next couple of days is the anniversary. <gasps> just dawned on me. Uh, so a year ago, um, and he he died at ninety four. But he also sort of died or slowly died before because he he had a um, dementia. And that song's just about mm. watching my dad decline and his fears. And at, by the end, you know, like the song says, you know, he'd wake up and um, he wouldn't know where he was, what he was supposed to do. You know, what a yeah. panic that would be. And he never, it wasn't Alzheimer's, so he never got to the point where he didn't always was in this place of, of missingness. He'd sort of be fine at five o'clock and be able to tell you that this morning I couldn't do this. So he'd be able to describe his yeah. his condition, uh, which kind of made it worse because he almost sort of said, I wish he'd sort of go all, all the way to the other side so he wasn't in so much pain and so much fear. He'd wake up and he wouldn't know who he was. I know the times when I would walk into his house and he'd look at me and I could tell by his face he didn't know who I was and I'd have to introduce myself. And sometimes even introducing myself, he wouldn't be able to connect that I was his daughter. And I would think, okay, do I walk in? Because if I walk into the house, it's like a stranger walking into his house, you know? So I would say, okay, mm -hmm. well, you know, I'll come back later and I leave <laughs> and try again. You know, <laughs> I was, it was, uh, Sometimes I go into the yeah. basement and sort of sit in the kitchen and then try. Again. <laughs> but, but anyway, it was um, on again, off again. It was frightening. And that's what that song is. And that whole section in the middle that people hear that wouldn't know the intimacy of my dad was a plot pilot. So there's a section of him flying over the, you know, Quebec countryside you know, moon splashed and froze in the river. Our guide was a, a, a trip he took with my mother when they were young and um, he had to work one night. So he said, you know, you want to come with me? And she sat in this winter night and he, they always talked about this beautiful evening that they were in a winter sky uh, flying. And so, you know, again, this is a memory of family memory uh, that my dad eventually had no connection to. And yet it was a story my parents yeah. told us our whole lives, you know, it was, it was their love moment, their love connection. Um, it's a terrible, terrible thing. And uh, and I think what Mike wanted to say was just to really, um, to really try and show just how horrible dementia and all that is. You know, just what a huge disease that I don't think it gets enough yeah. attention. You know, 
people have cancer, everybody freaks out, but dementia, oh, well, that's sad. You know, he's just a funny mm. old man. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a scary, horrible disease. Yeah. And so many people have connected on the video that was posted up on YouTube. And so many people in the comments are, are connecting to each other and, and, and sharing in this experience that many, many people have had. So having more places to represent that kind of experience is so, yeah. so very important. Yeah. Margo, thank you so much for joining me on the rise today. Uh, oh, such absolutely anytime, absolutely anytime. Number 27 this week on CKUA's top 30 chart. And uh, I think it's appropriate to play the next track, What I Lost on CKUA. Thank you, Margot. Take care. Take care. Bye.